Hey guys, welcome back to Mad Bird Plays the Banner Saga. Um, so, last episode we switched main characters to Rook and Alette, who are two humans living in the... Uh, what's this place called? <laughs> Any excuse to look at the map, right? Rook and Alette from... Skogur. The descendants of Sten, unable to cultivate good yields or find much fish in the frozen murk of Bar Harbor. Nevertheless, scratched out a living from the beast of the forest, where they erected the stone to Hridvalir, patron of hunters. Fair enough. Well, there's the Bar Harbor. <laughs> um, so yeah, we switched to those guys. Uh, they got attacked by some dread, dredge, rather, not dread. <laughs> they got attacked by Drud Judge Dread in the forest to judge and execute. And um, when they got back, the town was under attack as well. So they fought that off. Uh, guy who blonde guy, blonde kid, got crushed to death by a dredge mace, and we have been told to go see if we can find any other people, so I guess we'll go to the market and see. Oh, that is literally just a market to buy stuff at. Okay. Um. What's this? Alright, that's supplies. Uh, what else can I buy? Charm of the Wandering Mind. 20% dodge strength attacks. 2 strength detect deflected. One will per kill, two armor per turn, two armor break. Two armor break is nice. Does that cost renown? Fuck it. It's bought. Whatever. I don't care. Heroes. I also have this. What's this? A let's bracelet. Lovingly made by a hunter's wife to keep her daughter safe from harm. Plus one armor, plus one strength, plus one willpower. Oh. I guess you can have it then. Yep. Oh, there we go. Uh, she's injured, so we need a rest. Uh, let's get. Oh, Ivan is promoting. Let's promote him. What's, what's that? Uh, exertion is the amount of willpower you can use for any given action. Let's up that to two. Let's buff his. Bang. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I need to use that. Come on, do it again. Uh, let's up his strength as well. And confirm. Oop. And that. And confirm. There we go. Uh, let's give him the plus... What was it? Plus... Plus two armor break. Oh, actually, no. Let's give that to... Oh, what's he got? Trigvai's necklace. A necklace met with matching full and half moon symbols made of pearl. Trigvai believes they align to give him good luck. Let's give him the world hook. Must be rank two. Oh. Well let's give let's give Ivor the world hook then. Whatever, I don't even care. Okay. They need to, oh, he's injured. Everyone is injured. This is not good. Because we can't actually rest. Hopefully we don't get into another fight, or it's just either. You find anyone? A few. Sent them inside. Gods, this is bad. About Gil. Oh, I got... <coughs> oh. Oh, bless me. Sorry, I got hay fever. Summer down here. It was my fault. He was a good fighter for his age. No family. I thought... I've forgotten what it's like facing Dredge. I'm out of practice, Rook. Look, as long as I've known you, you've always wormed your way out of talking about Dredge. This would be this would be the time to start talking. I can tell you they rarely stop for rest. The sooner we leave, the better. They'll follow us until we're tripping over tired women and children. Then they'll attack. Even after we're wiped out, they'll keep coming, trampling corpses in their wake. There's no end to them. How did anyone survive the Grey Wars? Us the Menders, I wasn't there. But I know you've fought your fair share. Yeah, I've killed enough slag for one lifetime. And that's why you're going to save us now. Don't lay that on me. Come on, let's get inside. Uh, great hall, I guess. Rook, thank the gods you made it. The Great Hall is an utter din, filled as it is with dozens of terrified families. Don't stop worrying yet. 
I haven't. What in the depths is going on? Dredge milling around, ransacking houses? The chieftain's wife finds you, pushing through the crowd. They must know we're here. Why haven't they attacked? Don't know. I wouldn't expect it to last. I've made some decisions, but tell me straight. What would you both do in my place? I'd have left by now. They're already outside the doors. Not so easily done. Brooke? Uh, I trust Ivor on this. The chieftain sighs a deep and heavy breath, slumping. He looks years older. I imagine it's fighting back and saving the town, but... Nonsense. Ivor's right, of course. We can't just wait to be slaughtered. Where do we go? If the dredge are coming down from the north... Frostvillier... Frostvillier... To the south. It's close, and it has walls. I t intend to free... I tend to be... I intend to be free of Skogir... Skog... Skogir... Fucking... I intend to be free of Skogir. In one push, nobody left behind. I wouldn't. If they follow us, we're done. What do you suggest? Let me create a distraction. Then go. I'll catch up on... I'll catch up on the road to Frostvillier. Sounds like suicide, Ivor. Let's do what the chieftain says. I was right. I'll help with the distraction. What if we set the town on fire as we left? Do we abandon the storehouse? Um, I'll help out with the, with the distraction. The chieftain thinks for a long moment. I didn't ask for advice just to ignore it. Promise you're not throwing away your lives on this. That wasn't part of my plan, Ivor. Nope. Then I'm coming with you. This catches you by surprise. The chieftain rubs his chin, but he doesn't argue. From the training she's given a let, you've no doubt she can handle... Okay, she's, she's the let's mum. You've no doubt she can handle a bow. Fine. I'll get the townspeople ready. Make your move, Ivor. We'll leave when you're clear. A let finds you before you have a chance to find her. I know what you're doing. You have to let me come with you. Don't leave me. Please. I'll be good. Not this time. Uh, I let her fight the last time. Okay, I let. Just promise to listen. I promise, she says. Iva soon finds you both. Let's go. Remember, we're not trying to fight them all. We're just trying to get their attention. You step into the town courtyard, where you can already see dredge in every direction. Iva starts banging his shield and swearing at them. We kill a few, he shouts, and the rest will follow. You steal yourself for a tough fight. Everybody's injured. Oh god. Let's put you at the front. <laughs> He's more injured, so you can go at the back. Okay. I think being injured just uh, decreases your strength or something by like one, or by whatever, how many, how long you've been injured. Oh god, why are they split up? Why would that ever happen? Um... Injury reduced max strength, yeah. Okay. That's not too bad then. Ooh, he's pretty bad. What's she got? Rain of arrows. Trap one tile with arrow, causing strength damage if walked over before the next turn. Okay. Cool. I have to use that. Oh no! I've made a horrible mistake! <laughs> Break that armor. Oh god, Rook is gonna die. Rook is gonna die something horrible. Um, let's use that mark target thing on this guy. No, actually, let's not. Let's. Actually, yeah, let's do it. And then she'll attack him. Oh, nice! Trigvir, you're gonna have a good fight on your hands. Actually, I know you're not, because you're coming over here. Um, kill that one. Nice. I don't want to use two willpower getting over there. Mm. 
break armor. Oh god. Oh, he's still alive somehow. Mark target. Nice. But now he's dead. There he goes. God damn it. Uh, let's not put you in too much harm's way. Actually, how far does that thread the needle thing go? One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four. No, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, let's just move over here. Oh god, I've made another horrible mistake. God damn it. Um, finish off this guy. Trigvir is doing good work. Poor Rook. Let's get you into it, big fella. That's gonna cost two. That's also gonna cost two. Fuck it. Break armor. Break that pickle. And down goes Alex's mum. God damn it. I'm not good at this game. Yeah, you can hit either all you want, I don't give a shit. I'm the tough bastard. Bang. Does the thread go in it? No. No, no straight. Sad face. Oh, that's a pretty good shot. Crack. going. Good man. Can I not show him? Okay, now I can. Two girls only got three left. Ooh. Trigby is dead. I've not got a good track record with this game so far. I've killed like 90% of my warriors. Just constantly. Trigby got promoted though. So did I ever again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You have no problem getting the dredge to follow. Things begin to look dicey, but you're eventually able to lose them in the thick woods, where they have difficulty keeping up. You climb to an overlook and wait for the caravan to appear. An hour later, Oddleaf, Odd, Oddleaf, Oddleaf is the first to spot them. There, she points to the road. As you rejoin them, you can tell that there was trouble, some people wounded, others missing. A group has gathered at the rear of the caravan. Oddleaf walks beside a covered figure in, in, the, in the open wagon. Old fool, she says through clenched teeth. I should have stayed with him. The chieftain's death hits you like a blow to the gut. You continue on to Frost Valley in silence. Oh, it's hand firmly in your own. Poor chieftain. 
Pausing to catch your breath, you glance backward to see the caravan stretched out past the point of safety. They're spaced out so far, you're unable to see those bringing up the rear. We've got to pull them together, says Ivor. It'd be dangerous to stop until at least the Godstone. The path should be just ahead. Call an early stop for the day, slow the pace so everyone can catch up, keep a steady pace, rally the caravan with a speech. Let's slow the pace so everyone can catch up. Give the others a chance to find us, you tell those ar around you at the front. You beckon the stragglers to pick up their feet, eventually bringing the caravan back together. However, many court curse that the slower pace and, and the lost time. Oh, that's pretty. Good soundtrack as well. Far enough for today, I think. After a day of misery, men and women drop their meager possessions beneath the godstone of Hrid Valdir. What are we doing? We just left our homes because suddenly they were dredged. Chieftain did what I suggested, and look what he got for it. Look at these people. Somebody has to hold them together. That's you, Rook. How am I supposed to do that? Lie? Tell them everything's going to be alright? Gods, Rook, I don't know. Pretend you know what you're doing. That's what the rest of us do. Thanks for the advice. Then do whatever you want. Let them fend for themselves if you can live with it. You humans are absurd, Rook. Furious when you are not in control, terrified when you are. Pull it together. Oh, that's sweet. You're right. Think of how I feel. I'm stuck nursing a bunch of weaklings. You do care, I can tell. Pheh. <laughs> Men are a plague on the world worse than any dredge as far as I can tell. Chats like this are why we get along so well, Ivor. <laughs> you sleep poorly, the sun forever stuck to an stuck to an eternally bright sky. Before the others rise, you find yourself staring over the long, low hills covered in pine. The godstone looms overhead, the massive eyes of Hrid Valdir looking in the same direction as you. Let's inspect the stone. The weathered stone doesn't see many visitors, not much reason to travel so far east. When hunters come through, they sometimes stop to give offerings, out of habit more than anything else now that the god is dead. Hrid Valdir was the god of hunters, and of wild beasts, occasionally seen roaming the land as both man and wolf. He was, he was always depicted in effigy with his terrible spear. You wonder what he'd think about his woods being full of dredge now. A young girl from the caravan approaches you. I made this for you, she says, handing you a crude necklace carved from a branch she must have found nearby. Thank you for saving Mama, she says, before hurrying back to her tent. That's pretty cute. Back at your tent, you rouse Alette, who clings to your arm until she's completely awake. Bad dreams. Eventually the camp is broken, and it's time to move on to Frostbillier. It feels more... It feels like an end, more than a start. Gain the Bjarken rune. Bye, Frid Valdir. Oh, there's the stone there. That's pretty cool. Didn't expect the taxi will be on the throne. The caravan halts when a group of men appear on the trail, weapons at their feet. We've seen the dredge in your wake, says one. We don't wish to meet them alone. If you'll let us join you, we'll show you a watering hole with enough animals to fill those supply wagons. An inherent fear of strangers raises mutters from the caravan. What are you doing out here alone? We were hunting here for food when the dredge found our village, says the man. When we returned, he looks away, unable to finish. Allow the men to join you. If you'll be no trouble, come along, you say. The men cautiously join your ranks and prove trustworthy. The hidden watering hole nearby is teeming with animals, and soon your supplies are nicely restocked. Oh shit, we only had four days. Oh shit, now we've only got eight days. <laughs> oh, weak morale. Morale has become poor. During a rest, one of the men get one of the men get too drunk and end up splashing mead in a warrior's face. A brawl erupts. Many thrown fists and a broken nose bone later. The instigator. Ra Raffin Raffin Svartir Raffin Svartir is tossed to the ground at your feet. Angry clansman looking for satisfaction. Oh, that's clansman. His personal defense is little more than drooling mumbles. 
Uh, encourage the others to let the issue drop. Guys, we can't let this shit tear us apart, okay? We're all on edge, he replied to the crowd. Does anyone here not deserve a strong drink right now? Let him walk it off. The caravan mutters in lukewarm agreement and gets ready to travel again. Could have gone worse, you think. Okay, we need a rest. Because, like, all of my guys are half dead. Where's the hero's tent? Oop, there's... Let's talk to Trigvi. Trig... Trigvi. Oh, they're not half dead. Nice. Let's talk to Trigvi anyway. What's the Bracken rune? 50 percent dodge strength attacks. Uh, who needs she can dodge? Actually, no, that's pretty good. Let's let her keep that. Let's give Rook the dodge ring thing. Ah, oh, he's not right. God damn it, Rook! You're a constant disappointment. You need promoted. Improve your ability. Yes. Oh, automatically improves. Nice. Uh, two points. Let's put him in that. That's break, isn't it? Break is the amount of direct damage you can naturally do in an enemy's armor. Yep. Let's do that. Not promoted. Oh. Oh, she's a sky striker. Not promoted. Not promoted. Promote. Uh, better damage. Nice. And let's talk to Trigvi. 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 Guess I better thank you for helping us out back there. Trigvi turns his eyes. Turns his head. Eyes wide as though something something was stalking him. Uh, hmm. Nice beard, Rook. But that's not why I'm here. <laughs> oh, this guy. Alright, okay. Why are you here? Fat clansman. What? They eat, eat, eat. Don't know how to kill a thing, Rook. He rolls the R in Rook gratuitously while holding out his spear for you to inspect. Rook. Look at this thing. They grow on trees. You can make this from a tree. My advice? Show them how to stick some pigs. Or stick a rabbit. A bird. You can stick almost anything. Rook. You think carefully about how to respond to that. Any more helpful... <laughs> I've got to go, Trigby. Any more helpful advice? Glad you finally asked. Don't trust a man just because they have faces and use their mouths. A man will look at you right through his helmet and lie. Should I trust you, Trigby? Come on, Rook. Am I wearing a helmet? Think carefully about how to respond to that. Have you always been this way, Trigby? Have I always been Trigby? Dumb question, Rook. Look, at, look. I, I hear what they say behind my back. Trigby's handsome. Trigby's brave. But you're the right man for this job. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You have to think... Yeah, I've got to go, Trigby. I get it. We've all got things to do. Me? I was about to go swimming. At least you're keeping clean. Nobody comes looking for you in a pool of water, you know. Don't let me waste too much time here, okay? We'll come get you before we leave. I'll see you around. Only if you keep your eyes open, Rook. You can't help but you can't help but hope that there's nothing sinister about that last comment. I think resting because we got we got weak morale at the moment, so I think resting uh, improves morale. So let's do that for a day. Normal morale. Uh, only six days of supplies. I'm just gonna risk it. Let's get moving. The caravan is visibly relieved to find a small village on the way to Frostvalier, with beds and fresh supplies. The locals here are shocked by the news you bring and discuss it amongst themselves while you set up nearby. What's this town called? <coughs> <coughs> oh, pardon me. A map. Oh, it's... Are we at Frost... No, we're not at Frost Valir yet. I don't think. I don't think. I think we're just in some random town that isn't marked on the map. But we're heading to Frost Valir. Uh, are we going to mark it? Yes. Let's get some supplies. Uh, yeah, that'll be enough for now. What else have we got? Frank, uh, whale whalebone needle... Sometimes the difference between armor over your shoulders or on the ground is whether you can keep it sewn together. Warrior's Oath. 
plus one willpower. Uh, let's get the whalebone needle, because Rook needs something to put on. Plus one. He seems to get hit more, so let's put it on him. He needs plus one armor. On rest? Oh, okay. That was a waste of... oh well. Might be useful. Never know. Uh, yeah, fuck it, let's rest one day. That didn't make everyone happy? Rest one more day. Oh, fuck you guys too. I'll buy a couple more supplies to make up for that. And leave. You're only just outside the village when two men in red approach. My name is Hogan, says one, gesturing to the other. My brother is Mogan. Many from the village wish to join you to Frostvalier. A third man, exuding rage, charges up to the group. Shut your mouth, Hogan, he screams. A man. What's, what's going on? These bastards don't speak for us. They've been trying to divide the village since you got here. True, you can keep whoever wants to stay and die. The rest of us will... Oh, they're twins. The rest of us will go with the reasonable folk, people of Sk Skogir. I'll have you both gutted before I let half the village desert. Behind the angry villager, a mob of armed thugs has appeared, all furrowed brows and nervous stares. You both know what will happen to the rest of us in the, if the fields are abandoned. Nobody leaves. There won't be anything to tend once the dredge arrive. Dredge my ass. I don't know what the scam is this time, Hogan, but you've got two choices. Get back to work, or I'm finally putting you in the ground. Mogan, what do you say? Thought it was unfair if he, that he only asked me. Mogan draws his axe slowly, followed by Hogan. Despite their confidence, the brothers are significantly outnumbered. I think I make a poor farmer. However, uh... let's make this a fair fight. I won't kill men for defending their homes. Settle this yourselves. You step back as one of the thugs lunges forward and is caught in the ribs by Hogan's axe. The air soon rings with the sound of screams and axe heads against shields. Four men lie dead in the ground before the others run. You hurt, Mogan? No, we should have done that years ago. Nah, can't go around killing for no good reason. This was a good reason. So I guess Hogan and Mogan are coming with me. The brothers head back into the village and soon many of the villagers have joined your caravan. Hogan introduces you to his young son and wife. All grins, unconcerned about the fact that you are never that you never agreed to let them come. You don't bother arguing. Before you long, you set out again. Plus 84 clansmen. Plus 11 fighters. Plus 5 renown. Plus 15 supplies. Nice. I let marches quietly alongside the caravan, a little distance since leaving the village. When you stop for a rest, Oddleaf approaches you both. I let. I have something for you. Oddleaf is gathered up the long banner from the caravan, and smiles warmly as she passes it to Alette. What's this about? I was hoping you'd sew up the banner with everything that's, that's happened since we lost Skogio. Come find me another time, Rook, and we'll talk. Before you can comment, she departs. Dad, are you the chieftain now? Oh, Rook's... oh, okay. I thought they were like boning. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Guess I'll have to find out later. It looks that way. I don't know. Oh. And that means you're both quiet for a moment while I let unfills the banner. Oddleaf has been teaching me how to sew. She speaks very pretty highly of you. Can we read the part about Mum? You nod. On the banner has been sewn the story of the families who have lived at Skogia throughout the years, just as it is done on every banner in every town. That would be why it's called Banner Saga. I wish she were here, but I'm kind of glad she isn't. The section of the banner about your family is short, but Alette has been sewing in colourful designs. Why do you say that? So she doesn't have to deal with all of this. Dredge, leaving home, and... Why didn't you stop those men ki killing each other in the village? I mean, if it's okay to ask. It wasn't my decision to make. Deciding what happens to other people, I'm glad I'm not you. I wouldn't know what to do. It's not exactly my calling either. Yeah, I know, Dad. I think you're doing a good job. She hugs you. You spend the rest of your time together, sewing new verses into the banner. 
For better or worse, the story of Skogird is your burden now. And I think we're going to leave it there, guys. So, um, thanks for watching episode 3 of uh, Mad Bird Plays the Banner Saga. And uh, stuff is starting to hot up a bit now, so hopefully I'll see you next time. Have a good day. <laughs> and this stop saying that. Have a good one. Stop saying that as well. Goodbye.